So FODMAPs are a group of carbohydrates, um, and they are thought to cause symptoms in patients with IBS. Um, so FODMAPs are carbohydrates that when they hit the GI tract, they're fermented by bacteria in the gut, um, and then that fermentation process goes on to cause symptoms like diarrhea, bloating, discomfort. Um, and we thought that if you have a decreased amount of those FODMAPs in the gut or in your diet, um, that might lead to improvement in IBS symptoms. Um, this strategy or this diet that we use is not new. It's been around for several years. Um, but it hasn't ever been looked at in the U.S. adult population, which is clearly of great interest to all of us. Um, it's been done in uh, Australia and in Europe, um, but you know, Americans are a more diverse group of individuals. We eat different things, um, and we really weren't sure how effective the diet would be in the U.S. population. Well, IBS is a very common disease. Um, it affects 15 to 20 percent of the population. And unlike other chronic diseases like diabetes or hypertension, for example, um, IBS really affects your quality of life. You have active symptoms, um, often really limiting your work and social activities, um, leading to decreased intimacy, poor sleep. Um, IBS patients report a lot more fatigue than healthy controls. Um, and it kind of leads to some social isolation. Um, and that is something that's really not necessarily seen in other GI diseases and definitely not in most other chronic diseases that we think of. The, we looked at how a low FODMAP diet um, would uh, compete or how it would compare to a diet based on more common sense recommendations um, in terms of treating IBS. And we looked at quality of life before and after both diets. Um, and what we saw is that patients um, who are on a low FODMAP diet had a better quality of life at the end of the study compared to those who are on more common sense recommendations. So the two-week screening period is really to make sure that patients are um, having significantly severe enough symptoms that would really seem that they might benefit from this kind of diet. Um, if a patient has mild symptoms, say some abdominal discomfort here and there every once in a while, it would be very difficult to show any sort of benefit um, within a four-week period, um, no matter what your intervention was. So really, we really wanted IBS patients who are moderate to severe IBS, um, and so that way they would see the most benefit that we can measure. Anxiety is really um, prevalent in IBS. Um, it's probably due to a number of things. It could be due to patients' underlying anxiety that may make their uh, IBS worse, or their IBS could be ma make their underlying anxiety much worse. It's probably you know a vicious cycle that's related. Um, and what we found is that um, there was an improvement in the in the low FODMAP, in, uh, it, there was an improvement um, in anxiety in the low FODMAP diet um, that we didn't see um, in, for the uh, diet that was based on more common sense guidelines. Um, and that degree of change, that degree of improvement of anxiety was statistically significant. I think it's a really interesting question. Um, we definitely know that the low FODMAP diet improves IBS symptoms in general, um, specifically IBS uh, related abdominal pain and IBS related bloating. Um, so it's possible that if their symptoms are better, their anxiety improved. Um, but it's also some possible that there's something specific about the diet itself. So maybe something in the chemical components of a low FODMAP diet um, that's treating their underlying anxiety in some other way. I think that's really interesting um, in terms of future research directions. low FODMAP diet um, helps some IBS symptoms uh, tremendously, but it also has a lot of benefits outside the GI tract. I mean, really when patients are coming to you for treatment of their IBS, they have real symptoms, but they're usually coming to you because the IBS have kind of, has taken over their lives in some, in some way, um, leading them to miss social events, um, you know, places to go with their family. And if you can give them back um, that element of control, um, which we've shown that you can do with this diet, um, I think that's a real gift to them.